So, the MacBook Pro maxed out specs finally here. I just bought it, it just got shipped out. It is the 15 inch MacBook Pro Space Gray, the i9 32 gigabyte Radeon Pro Vega 20. So that's the new graphics card that they just released this December and 32 gigabytes and four thunderbolts um that's the one thing i'm worrying about so without further ado i've been waiting setting up these cameras for two hours so i just want to get into it so i'm just gonna get my key card out i don't have a fancy knife but it's more than enough so we're going to be ultra quiet to see and hear the sound. Ah, oh, it smells like new stuff. I like it. Actually, the last MacBook I bought was in 2014. Also maxed out at the time. I attribute a lot of my success in filmmaking to that little MacBook. It's still going strong, I still have it, but it's been getting slow, especially with now, we're doing a lot of drone stuff, 360, so a lot of 4K footage. So, yeah, really excited with this edition. Okay, it's the first time I'm opening it. I'm gonna open it this way. It's a really heavy box. It's a bit heavier than a 13 inch, that's for sure. Whoa, that slipped. That really smells good. The design is really, really nice, I have to say. The packaging, I mean, it's Apple, as always, really, really good. Good presentation. I like how the unpacking is actually made really simple. Almost had a first scratch on it, barely out of the box. I'm gonna put it back. So the first thing I see here is actually not much. This basic warranty thing. I don't know if you can see this. The MacBook Pro. It's a little bit of a kind of for visual people like me. Not super interesting. I usually don't read manuals, I just tend to go in blindfolded, which with this kind of price maybe is not the best choice. But whatever. God, I love unboxing stuff. Never done it. Now that we've actually set up all cameras, I kind of understand why we never did it. It's a lot of work. So this brick is huge. I guess with the 15 inch, you need a bigger brick. Um, so this is a new world to me. Um, for the longest time, I didn't want to upgrade my MacBook because of the lack as you can see here the lack of the sd card slot as a filmmaker that is terrible news especially when you're spending the night in an airport and you need to finish someone's project so yeah you really put plastic on everything i have no idea why actually and the plastic is terrible to peel off like they, they fill up the plastic in such a way. Okay. Okay, that kind of clicks hard on it. Not as smooth, but I guess it won't slip. I guess we don't need this one. So this is the brick. USB-C, 
What I like very much is how they said innovation and then there was this meme with 180 degrees because you can just put it into the camera, into the laptop like this and like this. But then 20 years ago, Nokia came out with that round one, which was 360 degrees. So and how far is that innovation? You never know. Let's see if the battery is actually charged. Imagine you're at an airport or something and you need to buy a MacBook out of the box. Do you think it's charged? Hey, they have the 3.5 millimeter here, so that's nice. Uh, but let's go into that a bit later. So we're going to open it now. That does smell nice. So this is the screen. Ooh, and I can see that it's already been turned on, which means that we do have battery out of the box. That's a that's really nice. The first thing I'm noticing is the touchpad is huge. Like it's really big. I think the last touchpad was like this big. It's way smaller. So it's asking for some stuff. So let's go into Om Nederlands als hoofdtaal te gebruiken, druk je op de return to To use English what? as the main language, the hell press is the return key. This? Press the return key, okay. This is the first time I'm using this new touchpad, by the way. I like the click sound. Ooh, it does, ooh, it feels so much nicer actually than the 2014 one. I've been like for so long in that 2014 one. It's crazy. So I'm actually based in the Netherlands and I think I have a Dutch keypad here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna click continue. We have free Wi-Fi here. So I'm going to just set it up. Data and privacy. Don't transfer any information now. I'll do that later. Let's skip uh, set up later. Skip. Okay, I think it's going to happen now. It's asking for my full name. So I'm just going to say my name. Oh, it's already lagging. What happened there? Jesus, there's already a lag. What is happening with this laptop? Every time I click on it, it just starts. I'm just not gonna give a password now. I'm gonna reboot it from, I'm gonna transform it from my old MacBook to this one. So I'm just gonna skip through all of this. I'm just gonna write test for now. Test, test. Okay, so it doesn't let you get, it doesn't let you have an easy password, which is weird. It needs to be a complicated password. Check the fields marked on the arrow and enter the same password in both fields. What the hell is this problem? I don't need a password. Yolo one two. They don't let me do the password. You're my Jack, Jasmine. <laughs> the hint can't contain the pa oh okay. Whatever. Okay, no password. Yolo one two. That's the password. Don't forget it, because I'm gonna forget this one. So anyways, we're gonna set things up now. Express setup. Siri. Enable Ask Siri. Yes. I love the UK version of Siri, so we're just going to keep that. Setup Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Hey Siri, open the documents folder. 
Damn, just recognize it. Hey Siri, show my downloads. Hey Siri, what's the weather like? Hey Siri, what does the rest of my day look like? Hey Siri is ready. Touch ID. Gee, how much stuff does this thing have? I think it has some plastic over it, doesn't it? No. Okay, so in order to install the Touch ID, you need to tap it multiple times. Oh, oh, apparently it also clicks the Touch ID. So, so when you tap it, you shouldn't click it. Choose your look, light or dark. So I can choose my look apparently. So I'm gonna go for a light for now. So apparently it has a true tone display. Your Mac automatically adapts to ambient lighting conditions to make colors appear consistent in different environments. See without true tone display. Oh, okay, so when you click it, you see it, and it's... Check this out. So when you click it, it becomes bright. Check this out. If you click it, it becomes bright. So that's what a true tone display is. That's pretty crazy. Okay, it's setting up my Mac. Almost there, and then we're gonna go into the specs of it all. Okay, so it's finally set up. So the quick things I wanna go over it is just like first the hardware, then the software, what I actually bought, and then I would like to go a little bit deeper into if I think it's worth it. Uh, because if it's not worth it, then maybe it's best that I return it. So first we'll go into the hardware, the software, the pros and the cons, and then based on that, I'll tell you why I think it's worth it or if it's garbage. So first of all, let's go into the hardware. Um, I actually really, really like the space gray part, but I have to be honest, um, the, the light gray is really nice too. So it would have been cool if they had an all black version. So Apple may be interesting all black version but uh, in the meantime you see what I really like is the 3.5 is still uh, here which is important you have the USB-C two times here and two times here so that's actually an issue because we do a lot of video editing so I actually had to buy a lot of dongles so the price actually went up because of that I do notice I'm just turning like a little bit the laptop here and there and there's like a ton of fingerprints already which I don't remember having with the old MacBook so that's maybe something annoying oh also the Apple has no light it's just a mirror so that's weird um, and then when you look at the screen which is really interesting it's like almost edge to edge and there's like I don't I'm not sure this design is really actually really nice it's you can barely see the MacBook Pro um, it's as if there's almost no space but they had to put it there um, the webcam is also here which is fine um, but in general it does look super nice I have to say the two seconds that I had tapping this keyboard it, it's a uh, it's weird it's weird uh, but I think I could get used to it if you're really quiet you can hear the tapping sound the tapping sound actually sounds really good I can see how they say I think they said in one advertisement that you will actually type faster I can kind of see it but you'll have to get used to it um, I have to say, this touch bar is one of the things that I wasn't too sure about. And now that I'm testing it out, 
I'm actually not too sure about it either. I think I'll know after probably a couple of weeks of testing if it's worth it. The one thing I can tell you though, that mouse makes it all worth it. That mouse, just the new design on the mouse, uh, how many times that I wasn't editing something and just I needed that space. I was actually considering buying uh, for my old MacBook that, that trackpad thing uh, just to have more space, but just everything's just resolved thanks to this one. There's so much space. Just like if I do my circles, there's even like still like two finger space on each side, which I really, really like this space. Um, so that's kind of the hardware part of it. Uh, I'm coming from a MacBook uh, 13 inch, so this is the first time I'm having these speakers. So I'm gonna test those speakers out going to YouTube. Let's see what we can check out. Let's go to our YouTube channel. Hmm. Ooh, yeah, I already don't like the fact that with this touch bar, I cannot get to the audio right away. It's a bit annoying, I have to say. Hi, meet me. Hi, my name is Lova. Yes, like the song from Shaggy. I do get that a lot. And two years and 10 days ago, I set up a work-life balance platform called Why Not Three. What's interesting? Okay, it's a bit weird. Um, I'm going to check out if it's possible to put this volume thing so that I can just do quieter and, and louder, but I said I don't like this situation at all. Um, but the sound is great. Well, I mean, the sound is really good. Hi, meet me. Hi, my name is Lova. Yes, like the song from Shaggy. No, the bass is really good. I really like that. You can truly like hear stuff, um, which sounds stupid, but you know, it's the small things. But um, now let's go into the software and the reason, coming closer to the question, whether it's worth it to me. So I have, I'm gonna use that camera. I think it's uh, zoomed in. So I have, I hope this is the right laptop they sent me. Yeah, it is. I have the i9 32 gigabyte. Um, see here an Ultra HD. See here an Ultra HD graphics card, but they promised me they had that Radeon in it. I'm sure it'll be fine. So there are a couple of benefits that I like about it. The new mouse, the speed of the thing, the screen, the true tone, I really appreciate that. Um, the keyboard is something to get used to, but I've seen videos where they told me that, you know, it's something that you do get used to. The touch bar thing, I have to say, if we go into the negatives, is something that I'm not too fond of. Uh, maybe it's something I have to get used to, but the, the couple of things that I use most is contrast and volume, and I don't appreciate that I now have to do two taps to get into that. So those are things that I don't like about it. Uh, other stuff I don't like about it, which I already mentioned, is the lack of uh, ports, which really annoys me. But hopefully there is more battery life, so that's better for long-haul flights, uh, especially when you fly from Europe to the west coast of the US. Um, so sometimes that's like more than 10 hour flights and then you really need all of those batteries. So other things that worry me about the laptop, and that's more on the software side, is that uh, Apple doesn't work well with Windows software. So obviously we use Adobe packages and well, I'm a little bit scared because I saw a lot of overheating problems with this laptop, but this is the newer version of it where they released it with the Radeon Pro Vega 20. Uh, so I'm kind of assuming that that's resolved by now. And uh, in general, when we really do a lot of hard working, I have a desktop set up where I can just put it on you know, a cooler. Uh, so, and it has an external screen as well, so, so maybe that would help out. Uh, the reason I went maxed out for this one is simple. I only buy one laptop every five to, let's say, seven years. 
So for me, this is as a business expense, something that, you know, is going to last me five years at least. So if it's going to last me five years, that means that in five years from now, this one will still need to keep up with all the innovations that we have. Uh, another thing why I went maxed out on it is because we're shifting more and more into four, six, sometimes even 8K. Now, right now we're not doing a lot of 8K, obviously, but um, it's going to come. And doing a lot of 360, we kind of already feel how hard it's going to be. So that's kind of why I went maxed out. So based on that, I hope it's going to be worth it. Uh, if you're obviously not using it with a ton of footage like that, um, I'm not sure it's going to be worth it. You can just get the basic model. I know a ton of people in the company that have basic models and they work really good. Um, usually we just make sure that the RAM and the processor are good. The MacBooks are so optimized, you can get uh, great benchmarks on Final Cut Pro when you work on Apple optimized software. So yeah, is it worth it? I think it's worth it for me if you look over a time span of like five to seven years. Is it worth it right now? I think it's a little bit overpriced. It's a bit ridiculous for what it is. I mean, it's a small laptop and they put stuff in there that gaming PCs almost uh, charge a lot for and have a lot more space and have cooling rigs for. So, but again, I hope it's gonna be worth it to me and that in five years from now, I can still look at this laptop just like I look at my old laptop and, and feel like I can still get my work done, even though kind of the needs of my clients get higher and higher and higher. So that's kind of why it's worth it to me. But if I look at it as a normal person, just like after what I spend, then I'm kind of like worried that maybe it has been um, a stupid decision. Um, I'm just kind of betting on what I've already experienced from Apple, which is I built everything around my old laptop and that old laptop has never disappointed me. So it's kind of the trust and loyalty to me towards a brand that uh, I pretty much owe my entire career to. So that's kind of partially why I stay loyal to the brand, to the company. And uh, when it comes to those decisions, I just take the investment. Um, I wish this was a paid advertisement. It's not, uh, but you know, Apple can always contact me. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of uh, it for me. Uh, that's a short recap of the unboxing of the MacBook Pro 15 inch, completely maxed out that I literally just bought. Um, I'm gonna put a cover on this. I'm gonna attach some dongles onto it. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like more stuff, uh, well, this YouTube channel is free, so just subscribe. Uh, hit the like button if you like it. Um, but most probably what I'll actually need from you is give me some comments about how to properly use and get the most out of this MacBook because I'm pretty sure you guys have uh, already know some more videos that I might need to watch. So just post those uh, links and stuff down below so I can watch it learn more uh, about this Mac and, you know, get the most out of it. Um, oh yeah, one thing that I didn't mention, which I really liked is uh, they literally sent me an email where I could schedule a 30 minute call where an Apple expert would guide me through the entire MacBook. Um, I'm probably gonna plan it for around Christmas time. I'm not sure how much they're actually gonna tell me, but post in the comments below and let me know if it's worth it to get that call or not. And uh, send me some videos so that I can kind of learn what to do with this beast. So yeah, I like it. I hope it's gonna be worth it. I'll probably do a check-in video in a couple of months to see whether it is worth it. And uh, in the meantime, yeah, let's stay subscribed and see what happens.